All right, here we are now. We're going to look at solving some different types of logarithmic equations and inequalities. This is section 8.4. Um, a couple different ways of solving different kinds of equations. We're going to look at equations with one log, equations with two logs, and then the same thing with inequalities. Okay, so we'll start with the basic ones. Just a plain one log equation where the input value, the x value, is unknown. So let's take a look at some examples of those. So I've got log base 36 of x equals 3 halves, and we need to solve this for x. So if you remember in the last section, we talked about converting logs to exponents. So why don't we do that? Let's turn this into an exponential equation. So this just means base 36, my exponent is 3 halves, equals x. And from there, we can solve. So what I did was I rewrote 36 as 6 squared, and then that enables me to be able to do power to a power, and then just get 6 cubed, which is 216, which is x. So log 36 of 216 equals 3 halves. If you didn't want to do that, rewrite it as 6 squared, you also could just, in your calculator, take 36 to the 3 halves power. You could use the flower power rule that we talked about in the last chapter and think of this as the square root of 36 cubed, which would also be 6 cubed. Anyway, you slice it. But the big idea here is turning this expression, well, the entire logarithmic expression, into an exponential equation and then solve for the unknown quantity. We'll look at a second one in this type. Log base 8 of x equals 4 thirds. Again, Rewrite this as an exponent, so you've got your base of 8, you've got your power of 4 thirds, and you've got your unknown, which is x. So 8 to the 4 thirds power has to equal x. Again, I could use flower power, or if I want, I can rewrite 8 as a smaller number, 2 cubed, which is raised to the 4 thirds power. Power to a power will enable me to multiply 3 times 4 thirds, which then just is 2 to the 4th, which is also 16. So x is 16. Okay, um, now in your note sheet, you have a couple more examples like this. Do what we just did here. You can rewatch these examples again if I went a little too quickly. But basically, we're just going to rewrite this into an exponent and take the exponent. Just do base to the right-hand side power equals x. Okay, when you're ready to try the next set of problems, you can restart the video. Okay, so now we're going to look at equations where there's logs on both sides. And this is very similar to when we had exponents on the same side or on both sides of an equation. So you have an equation like this, log base b of x equals log base b of y. If you have an equation like that, and if the bases of the logs are the same, very similar to when we were talking about bases of exponents earlier this chapter, then all you can do is disregard the logs and just say that that means x has to equal y. So here's an example. Log base 2 of x squared minus 4 equals log base 2 of 3x. All right, we're talking about logs of base 2. Since you have a log base 2 of both sides, we can disregard them and just set the two arguments equal to each other. x squared minus 4 equals 3x. All right, I have a quadratic here. I have the squared term. So I've got to get one side equal to 0 in order to solve this, just like we've done in the past. So x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals 0. And lo and behold, if you sit and stare at it long enough, you'll see that this is factorable. Two numbers that multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3 are x minus 4 and x plus 1. So we set each of those factors equal to 0. So that means that x can either be 4 or negative 1. Now the only thing you have to be careful about when you have logs on both sides like this Make sure you're checking for extraneous solutions. The big thing we have to check for in this case, remember we talked about the domain of a logarithm. Logs can only be taken for positive numbers. So we need to make sure when we plug in these two numbers into the x squared minus 4 and 3x that we don't have a negative value. Let's check what happens. So we'll put in 4 first. So we have log base 2 of 16 minus 4 equals log base 2 of 12. That's true, so x equals 4 is a valid solution to this equation. But now when we put in negative 1, we get log base 2 of negative 3, because we get one, negative 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4, which is negative 3, equals log base 2 of negative 3. Now, yes, I get the same thing on both sides. So technically, 
the equation still holds. However, we can't take a log of a negative number. They know logs of negative numbers. So x equals negative 1 is extraneous. We have to throw it out. All right. Let's take a look at... Actually, before we take a look at that, I have some practice problems that I want you to try. I'm going to pause the video at this point. So try a couple more examples like that. You're just going to set the arguments equal to each other. When you're ready to start looking at inequalities, you can pick up the video where we left off. Okay, so now let's look at log inequalities. All right. We're going to start with just one side containing a log. This is a little tricky. You'll see in your note sheet there's a little bit of a box for you to fill in this. Depending on the inequality sign, the answer is going to look slightly different. So the first case is if we have log base b of x is greater than y, or it could be greater than or equal to. The key is greater than sign. If you get a problem, and that's the way it looks, then that means x has to be greater than b to the y. So you're sort of converting this back into an exponential inequality. Okay? Now, what if it's log base b of x is less than y, or less than or equal to y? Well, then that means the solution has to be that 0 is less than x, which is less than b to the y. Okay? So take a second, make sure you have that copy down in your notes, and we'll do some examples of that. If it's greater than, then x is greater than b to the y. If it's less than, then x is between 0 and b to the y. All right, so we'll do an example. Log base 3 of x is greater than 4. All right, it's greater than, so we're going to use the first example. So this means x is greater than b to the y, which in this case is 3 to the 4th, or 81. Okay, let's look at a second example. Log base 2 of x is less than 4. Okay, so this is a less than, so the answer is going to take that pattern in the second case. So that means 0 is less than x, which is less than 2 to the 4th, or 16. Now, why do I have to include this 0 is less than? Think about it. Hopefully you thought that, like we talked about in the last set of problems when we were plugging in values for x, you can't take the log of something that's less than 0, a negative number. So we can't just say x is less than b to the y. We have to say it's not only less than b to the y, but it's also greater than 0, because you can't have a negative number in your log. That's why we have to have that second part of the inequality. Okay? Pause the video a third time, and there's a couple examples like this. All right, so the final case we have to look at is when you've got logs on both sides. And this is similar to equations with logs on both sides. So two cases to consider. Log base b of x is greater than log base b of y. If the bases are the same. Then all we have to really say is x has to be greater than y. Log base b of x less than log base b of y, if and only if, you guessed it, x is less than y. So again, if the bases are the same, we can disregard the logs and we can solve the inequalities. All right, so we'll do one example. The first example on your notes is log base 4 of x plus 3 is greater than log base 4 of 2x plus 1. All right, they're both base 4, so we're just going to disregard the log. Now we're just going to solve the inequality. x plus 3 is greater than 2x plus 1. All right, so we'll solve for x. x is less than 2, or 2 is greater than x. Okay? Not much different than exponential inequalities. Bases are the same. You kind of just ignore them for the problem. All right, we'll look at one more. Log base 7 of 2x plus 8 is greater than log base 7 of x plus 5. So, we disregard the logs. 2x plus 8 is greater than x plus 5, and we solve for x. We get x is greater than negative 3. All right. So with that being said, 
That's all that there is to this section. There's a couple more examples of log inequalities for you to try. Thank you for watching this in its entirety. I know there was a lot to this. This section has a lot of different types of equations and inequalities, but I hope you see that even though they kind of each look a little different, the idea is pretty much the same in all of them. Okay? We will do plenty more examples of each type in class. We'll go over the practice problems that we did here in class as well. Any questions, please make sure you bring them to class. With that, I wish you a good evening, and I will see you in class.